Lab 17 is a very interesting lab. In this lab, we're going to look in, at an arithmetic logic unit. We'll create a test bench for it, and you'll learn a brand new feature of iVerilog, that is reading in an external test bench file. Now, let's get started. Lab 17 creates a test, uh, excuse me, creates an arith arithmetic logic unit. Now in the write-up, you're going to see that uh, we've introduced arithmetic logic units in section 8.4. However, in this particular lab, we're going to take a look at a, at a particular unit, an actual true unit you could go somewhere and buy, called a 74181 ALU. Now 74181 has several input ports. There's an input uh, A and an input B. Those are the two numbers that we want to work with. But then very interestingly, there's what's called a select bit and it's a four bit number. And there's a mode bit, mode, uh, it's a one bit number. So mode can either be one or zero. Now when the mode is one, then the ALU is set up to do logic functions. And when the mode is zero, then the ALU is set up to do arithmetic functions. Now, for example, imagine that the mode is set for one and the select bit is set for zero, 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 zero. Then the output of the ALU will simply be whatever's on input A, but knotted. If the mode is set to one and the select is set to zero, 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 one, then the output's going to be A or B not. You can read the rest of the chart and see uh, the things that are on there. I will point out that on the arithmetic side, a plus sign means that we are uh, we're taking an OR function. If we're actually adding, then I've used the word plus. So your challenge for this lab is going to be to create an ALU that meets all of those requirements. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly how to do that, but I will tell you the simple thing is to uh, use a, a long select type of, of structure so that when the select bit is at some level zero, 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 and the mode is zero or one, then it's going to select a particular kind of uh, function to apply uh, to the output. Now we do have a test bench and for this particular lab I've created and included for you the test bench itself so you don't have to do anything to uh, create the test bench. However, I will point out on line 30 of this test bench is a construct that you've never seen before. I've told uh, iVerilog to open an external file named lab 17 dot alu dot txt. Now lab 17 dot alu dot txt starts like this. Now in the end you're going to want to add a lot of lines because we have to test the alu in uh, for all possible select a setting, so there's 15, but both modes, so there's a total then of 30. If you have to have 30 lines, it makes more sense to put those 30 lines in an external test file and then simply read them into your test bench. It saves a lot of coding in the test bench itself. Now, so for example, line one in this file starts with this slash. That means that it's a, it's a comment that doesn't impact anything. Line two, though, 
I'm saying that input A is equal to 0, 1, 0, 1. Input Z, uh, B is 0, 1, 1, 1. Those are the two 4-bit numbers we're going to work with. I've told uh, iVerilog TestBench to make the select bits equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, and the mode equal to 0. If we do that, then we expect the output to be equal to input A. So the expectation is 0, 1, 0, 1. On the next line, again, A and B are the same. The select is still 0, but now the mode is 1. And you may recall when the mode is 1, let me take a quick look here so that we know. If select is 0 and mode is 1, then we expect A not to be output. And so I would then expect the inverse of A to be output, and that would be 1, 0, 1, 0. You should build all 30 lines that we're going to use to test the ALU, along with the expectation. And then you can run those. Now here's my iVerilog source uh, file and uh, I'm my command prompt, uh, console file here. If I do a directory, I see that I do have, in fact, lab 17 ALU test bench and then lab 17 ALU.v. So I can compile this, lab 17.alu.v and lab 17.alu.testbench.v and it compiles properly. I can then execute it and you can see that it is reading that test file that we had, that text file, and that it is uh, executing each of those lines. Now there is a third line because uh, of a uh, artifact, a, a quirk with uh, iVerilog, it will repeat the last line twice and that's fine. Um, we can see though at least the two lines that I had in my test file are in fact being executed. That's about it for this lab. It's going to be a challenging lab for you. Good luck with it and I'll be seeing you online.